Hi guys, my name is Vanessa Smedley and I am a painter. Today we are going to explore the world of line and wash. And no, that is not when you hang your laundry out to dry. Wrong generation. You guys are totally not going to know what I'm talking about. Anyways, line and wash is actually when you use a waterproof pen to outline your subject and then you lay washes of watercolor over the top of that. Um, for a, an, a different kind of look from traditional watercolor. So today we are going to do this scene of some lovely sailboats um, from St. Augustine, Florida, image from Pixabay. Um, I'm about to go to St. Augustine, guys, and it's going to be amazing. So I thought I would include you all. Um, anyways, let's do this. Okay, so today for paper we have arches as Americans say, or Arsh, as it's actually pronounced. This is a 140 pound cold pressed surface. It's on a block, so it won't need stretching, although I still like to tape the edges. Um, then I have used a hockey brush, a one inch hockey brush. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna list the size of these brushes, but I'm not gonna list the brands because I tend to use the same ones over and over. This is a number six, a number eight, and a number 12 round. And this is a three quarter inch flat. For paint today, we are using my Daniel Smith palette, which I like to use from time to time. We're using the Pebio drawing gum. Again, do not use your good brushes on this stuff. It will absolutely ruin them. Instead, you wanna, you wanna dip it into dishwashing liquid first before you dip it into the drawing gum. A cheap brush. Um, and then a spray bottle, as usual. But today, we, um, since we're working with line and wash, we are going to be using these Micron pens. Um, they are archival ink and they are also waterproof. And this is a, an 05 and an 08. Okay, so you can see that I already have this drawn out in pencil and I'm just starting to ink this in with the Micron number five. Um, you can see that I have a whole line of those pins set out, but I ended up only using the the five and the and the 08. So I'm speeding this up tremendously because, I mean, do you really want to see me sit here and draw this? I don't think so. So here I'm masking out the parts that I want to remain white for now, and I'm dipping it in dishwashing liquid first and then into the drawing gum. Okay, so I'm gonna pre-mix all these colors that I'm gonna use in this sunset. Um, I start out with cobalt blue violet, and then I go to quinacridone rose. Um, then I'll mix a little pool of transparent pyrrole orange and then mix a little bit of Hansa yellow deep into a little bit of the orange. And then um, just a small pool of French ultramarine blue. Okay, so since this is such a fluid sunset, I actually pre-wet the entire paper from top to bottom with water so that I can begin dropping in the color later. Okay, so I start with the cobalt blue violet and then go to the quinacridone rose. I actually got a little heavy handed with that, so I wiped a little bit of it out. Then I go to the transparent pyro orange and then the Hansi yellow deep. And at the top, I add just a tiny bit of French ultramarine blue um, without you know, messing with it too much. We don't wanna mix it with that yellow and make a green sky, that is just not cool. Then I add a little bit of the, um, the orange around the sunset and a little bit more of the quinacridone rose and just blend it in a bit. Then starting at the waterline, I add in the French ultramarine blue, then begin to add in the transparent pyro orange and the quinacridone rose um, for the reflections for this. Thank you. 
Okay, so here I add indigo blue underneath the boats for the reflection and tip up the board and let it run down. Here I'm making a nice dark black by adding ultramarine blue and burnt sienna together. And here I begin adding in a lighter wash of that black mixture and using kind of a, um, a dry brush method at the top of the trees. Um, turning my brush on the side and dry brushing a bit. I'm going actually over the buildings in this part too because um, I'll come back in later and make the trees darker. But I want the buildings to just be kind of subtly there. I don't want them to be the focus of this painting. Here I'm removing all of that masking fluid so that I can start painting the boat. Okay, so here I am mixing together indigo and ultramarine in order to make a nice blue. I'm beginning to drop a bit of that ultramarine and indigo mix into these boats. Um, you can see that there's actually three boats here. There's one in the foreground, there's one behind it, and then there's that tiny little motorboat next to it. My husband says this is called a dinghy, but that just sounds goofy. Now dropping in darker mixes of the ultramarine and the indigo in order to make this more 3D. Now I'm going into the sun with some Hansa Yellow Deep. Now adding some more indigo for the darker shadow side of this boat. Now that this tree line is dry in the back, I'm starting to drop in a darker mix or a thicker consistency mix of this ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'm just going around the buildings and I'm gonna leave the buildings that lighter shade and just darken around them. One thing that I really like about these buildings is that the, the purple and the Quinn Rose are actually showing through that black wash and it's making the sunset appear to be reflecting on the buildings as well. You can see that I really didn't worry too much about perspective or accuracy in the drawing of these buildings because I really just barely want them to even be there. Just kind of shadows in the background. Here I am dropping in some transparent brown oxide for some wooden parts to this boat for a little bit of variation. I can see there needs to be some separation between these two boats, so I am darkening in the boat in the background in order to push the foreground boat forward. And then darkening in the shadow side of this boat again. I'm adding in some more indigo to just push this 3D effect even further.
At this point, I'm realizing that I'm totally a dirty, rotten liar because I said that I used a number six brush, but I really don't think I did. Here's the thing, y'all. I am like, when I'm painting, I'm grabbing brushes left and right, and I really, to be honest, half the time don't remember what I used. Just darkening details as I see them using indigo. Okay, so it is time to work on the water a bit. So I start out with indigo and do the reflections, the dark reflections underneath the boats. Okay, so here I am adding some details in the water with the ultramarine blue, and then I'm gonna be doing the same thing with the pyral orange and the quin rose, and just um, you know adding in water lines, uh, reflection lines, and actually even adding in orange into the blue, blue into the orange, um, you know because water reflections tend to jump around quite a bit. Here I am going back in and using a flat brush to add clean water and then wipe it off with a shop towel in order to add in some white highlights. You are able to actually lift out some watercolor paint and this is a good way to add subtle highlights to water. Here I am using clean water to lift out a little bit of a highlight on the belly of that boat the same way that I did the water. Okay, so I just let that all dry and now I am going back in with my number eight micron pen and I am thickening some of these lines, some of this pen work as the finishing touch to this painting. Here's the finished work, all dried and signed. And there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that, and I hope that maybe you might even try to paint it yourself. I mean, what is there to lose, really? <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, all of that kind of stuff. That's how this channel gets to be seen by more people. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.